If it's Sunday, it must be Sunday dinner with Chef Joe. I know everybody's singing that at the same exact time. Anyways, uh, welcome to another beautiful fall crisp day here in New England. It is absolutely like really nice. So earlier today, like when I first got up today, it was like in the 70s. It was warm. I was wearing shorts and next thing I know, it's around two o'clock or so. All of a sudden it just got like the air just got nice and thin and it just got crisp and cool and I'm loving it. Uh, and then I guess that is the forefront to the uh, remnants of Hurricane uh, uh, Delta coming through. So we're going to get rain tomorrow. So that's what that is. Anyways, now that I've given you my weather forecast for New England, uh, let's go back to what we're doing today, which is today we're making rack of lamb. And I got to tell you, I, you know, of all the dishes that we've, that I've announced that we're making, I have never seen such a huge, like, uh, burst of, re of fun reaction to doing rack of lamb. Everybody's like, yeah, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. It's one of my favorites, too. It was also one of my dad's favorites. So, uh, you know, this is a shout out to him today. All right. So today we're going to make rack of lamb. We're also going to make uh, some side, we're going to do uh, a side dish with it. So we're going to do a, also going to do a uh, Brussels sprouts. And uh, so let me uh, show you what we're going to do on the Brussels sprouts first. So that way we get our, if we put the raw lamb on here, we get, we uh, get our vegetable done first. So here I have one uh, container that we bought at the store of Brussels sprouts. I've trim them and cut them all in half so this is like a normal this is a normal size container which is really sad because they used to be bigger containers I mean they're really getting small anyways we're gonna put one of those in in our bowl all right and then we are going to add um, we're going to add some uh, a little bacon fat and it's funny because it's, it's so chilly out here now that my bacon fat was actually loosened up and now it's nice and uh, now it's getting as you can see it's hardening up because it's so chilly out here already all right and so i don't know about you but i the way i learned to like brussels sprouts from my wife um is that she loved to put bacon in her brussels sprouts so in this recipe it's kind of like this we're going with her idea with the bacon a lot of people do like bacon in their brussels sprouts and then because it is fall and because I have this delicious 100% Vermont maple syrup that I'm, I have, we're going to use a little bit of that in our dish. All right, uh, maybe a tablespoon or so, okay? And then we are going to, oh, hold on guys. Hang on one second, we gotta, we gotta make sure we're cooking here. Nothing gets burned up on us. All right, so. Anyway, so we've got that. Now, we're going to just toss this, okay? And if you want it, because again, the bacon grease is really starting to firm up from this nice chill out here. So all that is, as you can see, we've done that, right? And then, so we're going to put that aside for a minute, and we'll go back to that. Now, let's talk lamb. All right, so here's our rack of lamb. Now... The fun part about this is, is that you want to, you have this nice rack of lamb and most people would just look at this and go, oh yeah, this is ready to go. And what's even funnier is when I bought this particular rack of lamb, they said it was French. Now, anybody who, a chef out there will know that this is literally a really poor job of Frenching a rack of lamb. So that is why it is perfect for me to demo for you guys how to French a rack of lamb. So... Anyways, French a rack of lamb is all about taking out all this extra fat and having a nice, we're going to, what we want to do in the end is have a nice bone and then, and, and a lollipop of meat at the end of our, of when we're done with the trimming. So really all you want to do is you just want to kind of trim down the bone here, just like that. All right. Take that off. Hey, listen. 
there's nothing wrong with this stuff. You know, I, I might use that in something else. So, okay, so now we've done that, right? And then what we want to do is cut around the front of the bone. Okay. And then you're, you just scrape along the bone to get the residue of the, of the different fat off and the little bit of grizzle on here. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons you want to do this is you people seem to either love lamb or they hate lamb. And one of the reasons they either love lamb or hate lamb is that some, the fat in lamb, um, can some people will say it tastes like soap. Well, there's actually a reason for that. And the reason that it tastes like soap to some people is that there's a chemical in lamb fat called lanolin. And that is the one of the main <laughs> fats that is used in making soap. So that is why some people say it tastes like soap. And they're not wrong, actually. All right. So that's what we're going to do, right? We've, I'm, gonna sh I'm showing you how to do this. So we're going to do that all the way across. And then we're going to, and we're not going to finish it right now because that would take a little bit longer than we have for our show today. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how we dress it uh, for our cooking. Hang on one more second. got to check my... <laughs> we got a little fire going here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, camera lady, for zooming in on it. All right. So there's our lamb when it's done. All right. So, by the way, there is a lesson for you in grilling. See, even, even us... Uh, even us uh, chefs have uh, grilling issues. So, if you ever run into an issue like this, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> All right. So, while we're waiting for that to cool down, I'm going to throw in my... Ah, those, those are going to look great. All right, let's put that over here. We're going to let our lamb sit over here and rest now, because I am sure it's done. <laughs> All right, come back to the... Come back over, Miss Camera Lady. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to make the uh, the we're going to, to dress our lamb for our grill, and now you'll and then you'll understand why it was flaring up. So in here I have about a tablespoon already of olive oil. All right, and then we're going to add to it uh, about this is probably about two cloves of garlic. Throw some garlic in there. All right. We also have. We're going to throw in about a about a teaspoon of chopped parsley. All right. And then we're going to first we're going to grind that up. Okay. By the way, this if you want to know what this is, this is a mortar mortar and pestle. Mortar and pestle is what we're using. All right. Next, we're going to add in some more seasoning. So I'm adding in uh, about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme and about a teaspoon of za'atar, which is a uh, Arabic type, uh, Middle Eastern type of uh, seasoning. So about a teaspoon of that. We're gonna again we're gonna use our mortar and pestle and grind that all up. And as you can see, I'm creating a paste. If you can see in there, it's creating a paste. Alright. Now the main star of this dish. Hang on, let's uh let's make sure before we don't want to burn up our Brussels sprouts, so let's do that. I mean, we want our Brussels sprouts to have a little bit of a char because, again, we're creating a grilled Brussels sprout on this dish, but we don't want to burn it up. Okay. Now, the star of this, of this is the rosemary, right? And this is my fresh rosemary that we're cutting down, as you can see. So, how much rosemary you put in really comes down to you. Um, if you like a lot of rosemary, go for it. If you like just a little rosemary, whatever you like, but make sure rosemary goes in this dish because rosemary and lamb is like peanut butter and jelly. 
They, that's how they go together. All right. So right now, this would be perfectly fine to, to put on our lamb. But I'm not done. Because I want to... One of the things, when I think of lamb, of rack of lamb, I actually think French. And uh, so I'm adding to it, because it goes so well, about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And when, you know what's really funny, you guys? Um, I was, I get all the chefs and stuff on my Twitter feed and all that. And I saw, it was almost like, it's almost like we're twin brothers, but Emeril Lagasse just did a cooking video, literally like yesterday or the day before, doing the exact same kind of thing with uh, a rack of lamb, which is pretty funny because that's, I mean, we have, I've been planning this all week. So anyways, let's go back to our lamb. So the other thing I like to do is, again, remember we talked about, you want to you wanna leave some of the fat on the lamb, but you also don't want it to be the grizzly part and again if you got somebody that's on the fence about lamb this is this you're making their day by doing this trust me because they're going to be like oh this is much better and again i'm leaving some on because i'm like you know do i like a little lamb fat of course i do um, but you do want to trim some of this off because this is a little obsessive in the lamb fat all right so we've got that trimmed now we're going to take our our paste that we created and we're just going to spread it all over our lamb. Just like that. All right. And then from there we put it on the grill. All right. And then so let me take this off. So in the meantime, let's take this off now. Put this over here for now. All right, now it's time. Let's. It's time that we uh, take our lamb off the grill. So, let's grab our lamb. Our. You can't say that this lamb ain't barbecued. That's all I can say. <laughs> and you know what's really cool about. You know what's really cool about this show, is. What's really cool about this show is that you can. Um, that you can, uh, you know, you don't know what's going to happen when it's going to happen, right? So I'm just moving all this over for it so we could use this part of the cutting board that we didn't touch. Uh, so I'm going to cut down now our lamb. And, oh, you guys, it may have locked, it may have gotten burned, but that is some beautiful looking lamb. I, I don't know about you, but I mean, that's pretty, that's looking pretty perfect to me. All right. So let's bring that one here. Let's cut off another one. Uh, yeah. so, look, I mean, that's how cooked these are. They're literally <laughs> just falling apart. I mean, look at that, you guys. Right? Right? All right. Okay. So now we want a plate. So I got a beautiful plate here. And it just so happens over here on my burner, I have some Israeli couscous and what and what all I did with this Israeli couscous is can you zoom in on this that all I did with this is that I cooked it in chicken broth and I added at the end a little pars chopped parsley and salt and pepper so we're gonna put a little bit of our couscous on our plate like that and then we're gonna take our beautiful lamb chops that we have and put those on there like that okay. oh yeah there you go just like that okay and then we got to don't forget about our brussels sprouts over here you guys we put our brussels sprouts on and again, remember, these are our maple bacon grilled Brussels sprouts. And then, of course, I don't know about you, but when I think of lamb, what goes with lamb, but our favorite part of the show, I saved it to the end, 
perspective, what's Joe drinking? Today, Joe is drinking wine, of course. I think of wine when I think of lamb. And so we have this, uh, this one I'm drinking is a forager. It is from, uh, it's a cab from Mendocino County. So all my friends up in Mendocino in Cal Northern California, salute to you. And uh, let's see how this beautiful red is. I got this through one of those, uh, I'm one of these angel uh, wine uh, clubs that I'm in. This is fantastic. I've been saving this for a special occasion. Today, I thought there's nothing better than doing rack of lamb. I totally love this wine. Can't wait to have with it for dinner. <coughs> Anyways, until next week, you know my saying, make sure you stay happy you stay healthy, and you stay safe. And until next week, I'll see you on Sunday Dinner with Chef Joe.